you've been contracting for days, but you're not going into labor, odds are you just want a good night's sleep. Today, we're going to go over everything you can do to stop prodromal labor dead in its tracks. Welcome back to Every Mama's Midwife. If you're new, my name is Jess. I'm a certified nurse midwife and infertility mom. I'm currently 36 weeks pregnant with my second baby. As a second time mom, I'm not really worried about prodromal labor. Prodromal labor is when you are full term, so 37 weeks or more, and you're having consistent painful contractions for hours, days, even weeks, but your cervix is not changing. Sometimes this is also called false labor. I did not experience false labor with my first baby, and as a midwife, I know it usually happens to first-time mamas. As always, please check in with your prenatal care provider if you think you might be in labor. If you want to know how to turn prodromal labor into active labor, I'll link that video here. If you want to try and stop your contractions and calm your uterus down, there are a lot of things you can try. Number one on the list is a CalMag supplement. A calcium and magnesium supplement can help calm an irritable uterus down. We routinely use magnesium infusions in the hospital to help stop preterm labor. The magnesium works like a muscle relaxer and your uterus is one big muscle. In a small over-the-counter dose, a CalMag supplement is not going to stop true labor. You can also try just a magnesium supplement if that's what you have on hand. I usually recommend 400 milligrams, but I do find CalMag tends to work a little bit better. The other way that magnesium can help is with a warm Epsom salt bath. If you have access to a bathtub, Fill it with warm water, not super hot, and a few cups of Epsom salts. Soaking in the tub can help relax your uterus, but again, if you're moving towards active labor, it's not going to stop your labor, though it may slow it down a little. I tell my patients that if their skin is turning bright red or if they're sweating, the water's too hot. Third on the list is making sure that you're well hydrated. I get significantly more phone calls from my patients when it's sunny and hot outside and they're out doing things with their families and they start to get dehydrated and then they start cramping. Even being just a little bit dehydrated can make your uterus more prone to small contractions, which we call uterine irritability. So it can be helpful to try drinking a big glass of water and possibly an electrolyte beverage. If your contractions are relatively mild, just annoying enough that they keep you awake, it is okay to take Benadryl to try and get some sleep. This will probably not stop your contractions, but it should make you drowsy enough so you can ignore them. Benadryl is well studied in pregnancy and safe to take at a standard dose of about 25 milligrams. If your contractions are too strong to ignore with Benadryl, but still not changing your cervix, you may want to talk with your prenatal care provider about therapeutic rest. Therapeutic rest is a term that we use when we try to stop your contractions with pain medication. The most common medication combination for therapeutic rest is an intramuscular shot of morphine and phenergan. The morphine is for pain, but it will also make you drowsy. The phenergan is for nausea, but will also make you drowsy. You do have to go to the hospital to access this option, but it can be really effective for stopping prodromal labor and helping you get some sleep. Some mamas will wake up from therapeutic rest and their contractions will be gone. Others will wake up in active labor. I seriously considered this option when I was pregnant with my daughter and I'd been contracting for 18 hours and it felt like early labor, but I wasn't 100% sure that it was going to progress to active labor yet. I've seen this option work really well for mamas who want to avoid an epidural because it's really hard to get through labor when you've already been awake for several days before active labor actually hits. I know not everyone is going to be comfortable with the idea of using narcotics during pregnancy, so make sure you go over all of the risks and benefits with your healthcare provider first. Please drop a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. In the coming weeks, I'll post videos about FAQs about epidurals, prepping your house for a home birth, and making a birth plan, so make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss those uploads. Thank you so much for watching.